This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. It's OBEHAVE with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Today, this is a first in the 10-year history of broadcasting the Old Behave Show. This is the first time I've ever been inside the SPCA of Texas with some of the coolest guests on the planet. I'm talking about kids between the ages of 8 and 11 who are part of the SPCA of Texas Critter Camp. Let's give a big shout out, guys! And joining me on this special show are pet safety cat, Casey. He's kind of silent. Kona! Pet safety dog, Kona. So we just played a game with these kids called Canine Feline Fact or Fiction with your game show host, Casey and Kona. So... I have my first guest. What is your name? Brayden. And how old are you, Brayden? Nine and a half. Okay, so what kind of dogs and cats do you have? I have a golden retriever. Yeah. And then I have two ferrets, two fish. We have kittens that we're fostering, and then two mutts. You have a lot of mouse and gills to feed, don't you? All right, so... What's one thing you learned today in class? When a dog is hot, should we give them ice or not? No. Why? What's better? Because to... ice is super cold and the dogs are super hot. And, and if you put the ice on the dog's paw, it will shock them. Very good. Let's give it up for him. Come on. That's awesome. All right. When it comes to cats. Hello. What's your name? Kaylee. And how old are you, Kaylee? I'm 11. Okay. Do you have any cats at home? Yes, I have five. Okay, so what do you think of pet safety cat Casey? Uh, really cute. Yeah, he's pretty cool, right? So do cats have sweet tooth receptors or not? No. All right, I wish I didn't have a sweet tooth receptor. What kind of kitties do you have? Um, I have a tabby, I have two black cats, and uh, two black and white cats. So what's something about cats you really dig? They're very sweet and they're soft. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Let's give it up for her. Come on. All right. Now, moving to table three. All right. One of the questions, what's your name? She's taking the gum out of her mouth because we want to hear how she speaks. My name is Kelsey. And how old are you, Kelsey? Nine. Okay. So are Dalmatians born with black spots or not? No. Okay. So they're just born white and they get them? Yes. Okay. All right. What kind of dogs do you have? I have, well, we don't know all of the dogs, but we have six dogs. Wow. And I think we have a coyote mix. Really? Yes. Does he, oh! Not that, wait, kind of. (laughs) And then we have two puppies that, or they're not really puppies anymore. Okay. But they used to be. And my dog, Coco, always howls when she wants love. So Do you teach uh, Coco a, a trick? Have you taught Coco a trick? Our dad has. Just what's, what's sit trick? and paw. Has your dad taught you to sit and paw? Duh. No, oh, oh, duh. Okay, let's give it up for Kelsey. All right. All right. We can't be giving the show without talking to the teacher. Let's give it up to Miss Sarah. Come on, guys. And Sarah has a name of last name that's just great for radio show hosts like me. It is? Bowernfeen. Say it again with spirit. Bowernfeen. And you have a lot of vowels in your last name. Are you related to Vanna White from the um, Wheel of Fortune? I like to think so. Okay. So (laughs) what do you think, what's the biggest joy you get teaching these cool kids at Critter Camp? Seeing them like spark whenever they finally get to learn something new. So today when we came into class to give a canine feline fact or fiction game with Kona and Casey, what was on the table that Casey nosed out? (laughs) He got into the cat treats. All right. 
So he's got a good nose, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. So do you have any pets? I have a zoo. I have nine pets. Nine pets? I do. I have a dog, four cats, three birds, and a hamster. Wow. 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 So what's, what was something that the kids learned today? that you taught before I came in? Um, they learned uh, different cat behaviors. So they were learning that cat behaviors are completely opposite from dogs for the most part. So what would be one example, guys, of a cat action that's completely different than a dog action? And raising her paw is, what's your name? Lily. And how old are you, Lily? I'm nine. Okay, so give me the answer. What do you think? The uh, One of them is whenever a cat wags its tail. Mm -hmm. If the tip of its tail isn't bended and it's wagging its tail, it means it's very agitated and it's about to bite. Cause it's called it, lashing, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're very And what happens if a dog's waving it lazily side to side? It means that they're really happy, and the more violently that they shake their tail, it means they're really, really, really excited. Let's give it up for Lily. That's good. Okay. Now, when I came here, guys, I taught you the doggy ABCs. And who do I have here? What's your name? Varsha. Varsha, how old are you? I'm 10, going to sixth grade. Cool, cool. So what does the A stand for in ABCs for when you meet a dog? We, A, is ask permission from right. the owner. And B? Let the dog sniff your hand. Be sniffed. And then C? Pet the dog gently, carefully, carefully on its back. So when so the dog doesn't feel that you're trying to hurt hurt um, him or her. So when you see a dog look kind of happy on a loose leash coming your way, do you go right up to the dog face to face? No, I actually think it's a story for me. I'll go to my neighbor neighborhood and ask each of the owners. Yeah, and see if the dog belongs to them. Then I'll bring the dog to them and maybe they'll find the owner. That sounds good. Let's give it up for her. Come on, guys. Now, back to cats. With Casey, who's sitting here in a cool stroller, chilling. Casey says, when you want to meet a cat, what is the thing you do with your finger? What's your name, sir? Joseph. And how old are you? Ten years old. Okay, so you don't just go pat, pat, pat on the head of a cat, right? No, ma'am. So what do you do with the kitty cat? Put my finger out and, and let her sniff it. And then what do you do here? How do you say a kitty hello? Remember with your hands I showed you? Stroke his the cheeks. Cheeks, right. From the face or from the back? From the face. No, yeah, but you, you're standing yeah, behind. From the back, yeah. yeah, we don't do a kitty stare down, do we? Because who would win, you or the kitty? The kitty. The kitty. That. All right, <laughs> good job. Let's give it up for Joseph. All right, before we take a commercial break... I just want to know, does anybody have a question about cat or dog behavior they want to ask me? And I'll, Okay, young man, what's your name? Liam. What's it? Liam. And how old are you? Eight. Okay, what's your question? Please don't make it be hard. <laughs> um, dogs. Okay, what do you want to know about dogs? Um, I want to know how they, how they can bark. Okay. They have vocal cords in their throat like you do. And it's, you know how you use your lips to form a word? They use their vocal cords to make different sounds. So is it Liam? Is that your name? Okay, so Liam, tell me which one would be friendly. <laughs> which one would you go up to? The first one. What's it sound like? Nice. Yes, do the bark. You got it. You're on radio, man. Oh, he's panting. <laughs> <laughs> what's another sound that dogs will make when they're happy? Yes, sir. What's your name? They what's your name? James. James. What would they do? Uh, they would uh, bark. Like, yeah, but how do they make a bark, make a happy bark? Uh, they, it would be, kind, I think, light. Yeah, you can do it because you're on radio. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> What's your question? Um, so my name is Danielle. And how old are you, Danielle? Eleven. Wow, she's taller than me, everybody. I'm glad this is radio. <laughs> so my dog is aggressive to some dogs but not others. Do yep. you know why that would be? Well, let's do it this way. Are you friendly with everybody you meet? Okay. Dogs are like people. They have, they sniff, they use their sense of smell, and they watch other dogs' body posture. And based on when they were dogs, what kind of dog is your dog? My dog is a shepherd mix. Okay. That means it's a smart dog. So sometimes really smart dogs, and I had one too, will act really tough with another dog coming because they're not in their pet posse. And they have to earn their friendship. So the best way another dog can earn the friendship of your dog, whose name is? Jake. Jake, is just to sit and let Jake kind of study him and not be rushing up. Probably Jake doesn't like dogs that rush up, right? Would you like it if I came up here with this microphone and just ran up to you and had garlic and onion breath? Not really. Okay. It's kind of the same thing. So with your dog, I would say stick with the dogs that he's friends with. But when you're on a walk, 
and you see another dog coming, have Jake on this side of you with a shorter lead. And so you actually use your body to block the whole vision of the other dog coming. And so if Jake can't see full throttle the other dog, it doesn't get him his tendencies to spike up. So actually, you, it's called a body block. You think that'll help you? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Wait, I got to get other people. I haven't la- What's your question? What's your name, young lady? Camila. What is it? Camila. Camila? Camila. Oh, that's pretty. How old are you? Eight. Okay. What's your question? Why do dogs do this when they lay down in their beds? <laughs> they go. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, probably just getting settled, right? Uh, what kind of dog do you have? Okay. Is it a canine cocktail, a mixed mutt? You don't know. So your dog makes grunting sounds? Okay. Well, they do it because they're just... Have you ever seen a dog getting in a bed like Kona did? Watch what Kona does. Kona, come here. I'm going to... Everybody who's uh, not here in classroom, all the 600,000 else people listening. Kona, come here. Pretend, visualize. This is radio. Kona, come. Kona, come. Now watch. I'm going to say, Kona, settle. Go settle. Now watch. She's going to circle, circle, and settle. Sometimes dogs like to circle in a bed to get comfortable. And when they hit that sweet spot, instead of going, ah, they go, huh, huh. Sound like an old man. Ha, ha. All right, we have time for one more question. Yes. Liam asked about how dogs. What's your name first? Chloe. And how old are you? 11. Okay, what's your question, Chloe? Like Liam asked for how dogs bark, how do dogs howl? Oh, it's the same vocal cords, but they, why, they howl for different reasons. Howl is the um, predecessor before the telephone and the smartphone. Because some breeds like Huskies and Malamutes, it's like, I'm over here. I'm over there. What do you got? I got dinner. Okay. It's like a, it's a way of communicating. Now watch Kona. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. So some dogs don't like to howl because it might hurt their ears. But there are breeds like Huskies and and, uh, Malamutes that howl a lot, right? Well, guys, this is the end of the first half of our visit to the Critter Camp of the SPCA in Texas. We're going to come back after this commercial break and have the second class. So everybody, on behalf of Casey and Kona, I want us all to say what? All right. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Pause up, everybody. This is your host, Arden Moore. And guess what? I wear different collars in the pet world. I am also a master instructor in pet first aid and CPR. And I have some great news for all you. Safety is one of the best skills you can learn for pets that you have and those that you care for from other people. That's why I'm excited to let you know we now have a two-day online interactive pet first aid instructor program. Yep, I have teamed up with Pro Pet Hero and I am your instructor. We use Zoom technology, which is great. So you can be wherever you are in North America. I can tap into you and we have a class of up to six people at a time for two days and we teach you all the veterinary approved hands-on skills to become a pet first aid and CPR instructor. To learn more, please go to Pro Pet Hero.com. This is your chance to be your pet's best health ally. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is Jen Davis, the creator of Garfield, urging you to listen to the O Behave Show with Arden Moore on Pet Life Radio. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to Obehave. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the Obehave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. This is part two. We are in the SPCA of Texas in Dallas, and we're here to talk to some cool kids at the Critter Camp. Give it up, guys. Come on. Woo! This is a very energetic group, and with us today as my co-host in crime, we have 
Pet Safety Dog Kona, and Pet Safety Dog Kona has a fun nickname. Does anybody know what it is? And we'll ask you, what is Kona's nickname? Ice Cream Kona. Ice Cream Kona, because she's very nice, nice Kona. Come on, guys. Ice Cream Kona, because she's very nice, nice Kona. All right, now we also have Pet Safety Cat Casey. He's got kind of an actor's name that you put the feline in front. He's a feline what? Who's, tell somebody else. Sir. Casey is, because he's so cool with the ladies and the dudes, he's a feline. George Clooney. All right, let's give it up for Casey. <laughs> Woo! All right, we learned two really important words today. I want to ask somebody, if a cat goes heck, 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 and hacks up a hairball, there's a scientific name for that. It is called... You gotta say it, ready? Say it together, Tribazor, one, two, three. Tribazor. And with me is, what's your name? Rosie. And how old are you, Rosie? 10. And with me is? Giada. And how old are you? Nine okay. and a half. So what is a, um, what's a healthy hairball look like? Um, a healthy hairball would be um, an, um, just hair, nothing else, no bones, no blood. Okay. No coffee grounds. No coffee grounds, so what's the bad danger if it looks and like coffee grounds and it stinks. What could that be? It means it, it has internal bleeding. Very good. Let's give it up for these guys. All right. We all, how many of you like chocolate? No, it's radio. So you me, 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 me. But chocolate is not good for our dogs or cats, right? So I gave you guys a fun way to remember the scientific name for chocolate. Does anybody remember? So what, what is it? Isn't it tro No, oh. Theo. Theo Bromine. Okay, and who are you? Lola Britton. How old are you, Lola? Ten. Okay, so what is worse, milk chocolate or dark chocolate? Dark chocolate. Because the darker the chocolate, the more the... What's the ingredient? Cocoa beans. No, what did oh. you just say? Theo... Oh. Theo Bromine. So what are you going to do with your chocolate? Are you going to leave it on the counter for your dog? No. No, no. Okay, that's good. All right. How many of you have dogs and cats? All right. How many of you have adopted a dog or a cat from the SPCA? You got to say it. It's radio. So what's your name? Libby. Libby, what dog or cat did you get from the SPCA? Barbie. Barbie? What kind of dog or cat is Barbie? Um, a Great Pyrenees. Oh, a little dog. No, I'm teasing. How much does Barbie weigh? Her name is Barbie. Oh. Barbie changed. oh, you changed the name? Okay. How old is your great, how much does your great Pyrenees weigh? More than you or less? More. Oh my gosh. Okay. So what do you like best about your dog? She's calm. She's calm. Okay. Who has a cat that they've adopted from the shelter? Come on up. What's your name? You got to come up. It's radio. What's your name? Anna. Anna. And what's your cat's name? I have two here. Okay. okay. I have Squeak okay. and I have Fat Cat. Fat Cat slash Marbles. What? Yeah. <laughs> so what do you like best about your two cats? Well, they always fight over food, which mm -hmm. is funny. Uh-huh. But they don't hurt each other, right? No. Okay. And what do they look like? What does Squeak look like? Squeak has, she's a long-haired cat and she's silver. And what about the other one? Fat, uh, cat. fat cat is all white. And is she skinny? No. Okay. All right. Does she when you when she walks in the room, do you hear like vibrations? Yes. Okay. All right. I have time for a few cat and dog questions. How many of you want to ask me a question? Who wants to ask me a cool question? You got a question about your dogs or your cats? I'm here to help you out. Come on. All right. We got Elena? Elena, right? Yes. Okay, what's your question? Make it easy. Why are cats mainly nocturnal? Why are cats mainly nocturnal? Guys, what does nocturnal mean? They're most active in day or night? night? Well, actually, cats are not as much nocturnal as they are, ready for it? Dying. No, cricepcular. Huh? That means they're more active at dawn and dusk. How many with a, with a voice have a cat that wakes you up before your alarm? Me. Yeah. Me. Because it's early, right? because they're more active at dawn. How many have cats that are going crazy at dinner time? Because it's close to dusk. So they're more crucepcular than nocturnal. But thank you for your question. Let's give it up for Elena. All right.
We have a teacher in the house. Her name is Miss Sarah with a very hard to pronounce last name. Please identify yourself. Hi, I'm Sarah Bauernfeen. Good name. <laughs> Good name. So do you have a cat or a dog question? Um, yeah. So one of my questions is kind of like behavioral. Whenever I just gotten a kitten and how do you separate like adult cats and kittens food? Because my adult cats keep on trying to eat the kitten food. Okay. Do you live in more than an elevator? A little bit. <laughs> okay. So what we need to do is we have to outfox the adult cat. Okay. One of the best ways is at mealtime. That's pretty fun. I like meals. You can tell. But what we do is when it's time to feed the kitty and the adult cat, we put them in different rooms. But we also have the kitty learn how to get their muscles so that you could feed the kitty on a, on a sturdy scratching tree with the door closed. At the same time, you can have the adult cat eating in the kitchen. And you give them about 15 minutes. And when the bowls are almost empty or empty, you don't make a big deal. You pick up the bowls, let the little kitten out, wash the bowls. Don't leave food out. Leaving food out can cause problems. Food fights, right? What's a cat food fight? It isn't throwing the food. It's trying to take the other one's food, right? So I think she gave a good, asked a good question. Let's give it up for your teacher. All right, who has another question? I'm going to, all right, I'll get you and then you. Okay, say your name again. Lola Britton. Now, how old are you? Ten. Okay, what's your question? Make it easy. Why are cats sometimes mean? What do you mean? Cats can be mean. Everyone thinks cats are mean. <laughs> well, here's the deal about cats, guys. When they have a really wild history, they came from Egypt and where they were like gods. And then the Middle Ages came in England, and there was a lot of people thinking there were witches, and they thought that the cats that went with these women were Satan. So they would burn the cats. But now they found out then when they were moving to come on big ships to North America to colonize us, they found out they needed cats to catch the rats on the boat. Suddenly the cats' popularity went up again. Today, I'm happy to tell you that cats are the most popular pet on the planet. There are more cats in, a, in homes than there are dogs. What do you think of that? Yeah. So when it comes to cats, keep this in mind, guys. I like to say that dogs put the D in drool, the O in obey, the G in goofy, and the S in seconds, please. But cats, right, Casey? Right? Yep. Cats put the C in candid. The A in attitude, the T in tenacious, I'm going to do it, 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 and the S in so what. Cats are not pleasers. Cats are like to hang out with us, but they're not like dogs who are like, do you like me? Do you like me? Do you like me? So does that help you, Lola? All right, we have time for one more question. Who hasn't asked? Lucy hasn't asked. All right, what's your name? Lucy. And how old are you? Eleven. So make it a good one. Why are cats so hard to train? Um, they're hard to train because we make the mistake of training them like a dog. So what I teach, you saw what I do with Casey. When you have a cat, you can do things. Have you guys heard about clicker training? Yes. All right. If you don't have that clicker, everybody cluck their tongue against the roof of their mouth. All right. Now you got a clicker. You'll never lose it. Don't lose your tongue. So when a cat does something you really like, like they just sat in front of you, Lucy, click and say with your tongue, let's do it. And then say sit. Good sit. And then give a treat. And the cat's like, I don't know what I did, but thanks. So when a cat does something you like, start clicking with your tongue and then mark it with a good behavior. So Casey, come here. Casey, Casey, Casey. Come here, Casey. Come here. We're on radio, Casey. Minutes are a ticking. Come here, Casey. Come here, Casey. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. All right. Come here. Touch. Good. See how I marked it, the behavior? And give them really good quality treats. Don't go low on the treats. Really? You don't want that one? Okay. Um, <laughs> so they have also a thing that's called luring, targeting. You can take a stick with a little piece of cheese or something at the end, and the cat will swat it and want to grab it. And you can start using that target stick, they call it, to have the cat do things like you saw Casey, like Casey walking around in the room. All right, Case. Casey, Casey, come. Casey, come. Come on. Come on, Casey. This is radio, Casey. Come on. Let's give it up for Casey. Come on, guys. And then I teach them up. Casey, up. What do you guys think? So you can train a cat.
Well, that's all today from the SBCA of Texas and the Cool Critter Camp. And I want to tell everybody that I really appreciate you guys being here. You guys are our next generation of being cool pet parents. You promise? All right. Uh, So to learn more about the SPCA, we'll ask the teacher, what's the website? SPCA.org. That's very easy. So until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.